Art imitates life and the artist on today's show does it best with beautiful lifelike silicon baby dolls. We speak today to Susan Gibbs, doll collector turned silicon artist who makes lifelike silicon baby dolls that are impossible to get your eyes off of. You'll see what I mean in just a while. It's so good to have you here on the show with us today, Susan. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> so you're someone who went from being a doll collector to a doll maker. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah, it was in 2009 when I discovered about uh, reborn dolls. They are vinyl dolls. So I got one for myself because I've always loved dolls since I was little. But they're expensive and they are kind of addicting. So I thought, well, I can't keep buying them. So I must learn how to make them myself. So with the guidance of some doll artists, I made my first uh, vinyl reborn doll. And then in I was just making for family members like my mother, my sister, my cousin, and the business took off. So I continued doing it. And in 2014, I switched to silicones. So I'm doing silicone dolls now. Can you tell us a little about the baby in your arms right now? This one, his name is Philip. And he okay. was actually, he was sculpted by a famous doll sculptor named Joanna Kazmierczak, okay. Pitka. And I painted uh, the doll to to bring him to life because the blank unpainted doesn't have any color it's just like plain silicone and i painted him and um i can't sell him <laughs> i love him so much so he's in my personal collection <laughs> that's so sweet okay and i can know when you're carrying him uh there's a lot of movement which you yeah. wouldn't really as all so is that something that you get only through silicone Yes, silicone is just like human skin or human flesh. And mm -hmm. uh, silicone has different, uh, we call it shore or hardness. Uh, they have different mm -hmm. grades. Some are hard or firm, some are okay. soft. The smaller okay. the number, the softer the silicone you can see. It's very, okay. very floppy. And there are silicones that's also firmer, but the soft ones are the best. <laughs> uh, this sort of of my son when he was a newborn he looked just yeah. like this <laughs> yeah yeah so were you someone who was always an artist or uh, is art that something uh, is something that came quite late to you i've always loved i've always been creative i loved arts and crafts since i was little but um before i became a doll artist i was a teacher i was i, I was working with uh, very small children and children with special needs. So okay. yeah, I'm an educator, actually. <laughs> That's nice. Sort of switched into educating even in this field. Can you tell us a little yeah. more about that? How I switched. Um, it was actually, it's, a, it's just a hobby. 2018, I retired early. I worked for 20 years with little kids. I retired and now I'm a full-time doll artist. And I'm loving it because it's, it's something that I love, you know, you don't have a boss, you don't need to worry about your time, you know, I'm my own boss, I'm my own staff, <laughs> I'm everything, you know, so uh, I love it and it's it's not it's not a stressful job because it's not a job, it's it's a passion, it's a hobby, yeah, and I get to keep them if I want. <laughs> I mean, uh, can you tell me a little about your first doll and probably the difference that is there between the dolls that you made back then and now? It's actually here, the first silicone doll. Because the first vinyl doll is was long time ago. Um, so it's gone. But this is the first silicone doll that I made in 2014. Okay. It's an, it's an Asian Looks inspired baby doll. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Oh, but but this is cute. firmer. Yeah, this is hard, a little bit harder. But it has cloth body, so it's still poseable and just okay super cuddly and as you see i kept it too <laughs> i yeah, kept I... my very first one because i wanted to use it as a reference for my okay. coloring and painting yeah so it's, it's just staying with me okay i mean uh can you now tell me a little about the applications of these dolls so i understand they've made their way into movies they've you know they help a lot of people in a lot of ways so can you tell me about those i'd love to hear it from you yeah so these silicone dolls uh, are primarily for 
high-end collectors, for doll collectors. They are not play dolls. They are not meant for children because they're expensive and, and um, it takes a long time to make one. And uh, some of them are, they're also used as movie props or mine are stand-in babies. They, they don't play okay. like a major role in movies, but they are just stand-in. So if the baby is fuzzy, the actual actor, they, they use my doll. So my dolls, you can't, I don't really see them on the big screen. Like I can't tell, oh, that's mine, or is that the real baby? Because they just use it every now and then. Um, oh. Yeah, and another use is that they also use as therapy dolls for okay. people with Alzheimer's, people with Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and also people who are uh, like, with special needs or with anxiety, depression, and even mothers who lost their children. And I always say this to people that no doll can ever replace a real child, but it works for other women. So we cannot judge them. If it works for them, then it works for them. You know, I, I don't judge, I, I, we can't judge them, you know. That's beautiful, actually. So, I mean, much like real children, real babies, I mean, this also has a gestation period. So how long does it take start to finish to making one of these dolls? Oh my gosh. I just for painting because i'm basically a painter of the silicone dolls it takes me at least a month and okay. that sometimes even more to just paint the hair is okay. a, it's putting the I hair rooting the hair takes another at least 30 hours but if i'm oh. sculpting <laughs> i some sculptors are fast some can sculpt in months some takes them years and this uh first my first sculpture sculpture i started mm. actually in 2013 and i was on and off sculpting because i'm not really a sculptor i just try and i made it into finally silicone it's a booboo baby it took me eight years to sculpt this little one and now it's in silicone <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is my my entirely my my work, and I'm also sculpting this one now. It's gonna be a new one. It's very oh, that's fashion. yeah. That's gonna be in silicone too. So it takes just for the painting to answer your question takes um at least a month and sometimes more if you include the sculpting and the casting casting meaning when you when you make the mold to make the silicone dolls like this one. That's another process. So they okay. go through different processes and that takes time, it's a lot of work, months, sometimes a year, yeah. I mean, I can uh, understand why, you know, you find it so hard to part with these dolls. I mean, you're with them for a year, making them for a year and then, yeah. oh. Yes. Yeah, I mean, tell me, uh, so this doll, the one that you showed us in the beginning, is a doll that you've kept. So, yes, one uh, of them. <laughs> You have the I I have six. Okay. In my collection that I kept because I it's so hard to part with them. Yeah. <laughs> <Take this>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, uh, what I can say, I mean, just looking at these dolls, you have a very good understanding of their anatomy, mm -hmm. right? I, how is uh, how did you go about learning this? Is there a process involved or I mean, is it through observation? How did you learn how to probably layer and get these different uh, elements to make it look so lifelike? Yeah. Uh, it's basically observation. Well, my background, my educational background is in clinical psychology. So anatomy is part of my course. And it's a, a part of my course that I really love a lot. I'm into science and, and human anatomy and all that. And um, also observation when i see a baby i look at their you know the skin and the modeling i have a lot of nieces and nephews and i looked after them so you know i look at their hair and and i admire their skin and it kind of yeah and then i also look at photos and that's uh that's how i and i mimic the, the, the coloring i mimic the yeah the features yeah in silicone painting less is more because mm -hmm. if you overpaint oh. it's gonna look not not good it's it's gonna look it won't look real because the secret the a secret in painting a silicone doll to make them look real is the translucency of the paint you can use layer you can use i probably do about eight to ten layers okay. but it's not fast layering it is working oh. Sometimes I, I paint with just a toothpick, 
to mm-hmm. just get those little little dots on the skin and I paint the the little mottling and capillaries by by hand so okay. that takes time <laughs> that's beautiful though I mean uh, like when I take a uh, looked at your videos and I took a closer look the babies actually look so real like so lifelike it's it's incredible thank like you're an amazing you. artist <laughs> thank you thank you I mean do you model these dolls based on like uh something from memory or uh do you have any source of inspiration or do you look at pictures online or probably your nieces and nephews I mean how do you model these dolls how do you come with what they're going to look like it's just my uh, my imagination i'm not a portrait artist some are portrait artists some some can actually mimic uh an actual human being and but my my hands don't go that way you know even if i wanted to it's just uh, um like like this doll it started as a, i i i was copying a face from the internet and it evolved okay. into a different face it's just that my hands are leading me somewhere else so i just let my imagination lead me <laughs> but, yeah that's yeah. nice uh, i so i mean i just want to ask you is this the reason why you don't do custom orders yes yes exactly because okay. uh okay. custom orders are basically the customer is telling you Tell- the specifications of what they want <laughs> So you, yeah. if you're limited, your cr- your creativity is limited. You cannot. Oh, I want to do this because they want. I want this on my on my doll. I want them. It's it's different. But some artists can do that, and kudos to them. But I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you currently have a competition running. I understand. This is for people who your course. Can you tell us a little about that? Yes. Uh, I have been teaching silicone painting since 2016 and during the pandemic I did online teaching and it's, it was almost it's almost a monthly and I I could see that my I, we have a lot of talented uh, artists not even artists just people out there and this is to give them a break to to have their name out there you know they're just uh, maybe some of them underrated artists and some of them really newbies never painted a doll before but after paintings like are you kidding me you've never painted before so let's do a competition it's just to give them a boost and you know just to it's not really it's a friendly competition because they know each other and it's you know okay. it's just to give them a little bit of yeah you can do that <laughs> yeah i couldn't take my eyes off the baby like just now when you're <laughs> holding the baby couldn't take my eyes off it. Yes. So beautiful. It is. <laughs> Thank you. It has. It has. And like, way like the body moves. There's so yes. much fluid. So nice. Yes. Yeah, that's something yes. you don't get with balls that you buy in the market, right? <laughs> no, 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 we can't. These are. So I mean, I'm going to bring up a very like. Um, a topic that you're probably very used to. So there's a lot of negativity surrounding this, and I feel like that's probably because of how realistic these dolls look and how they move. So in a way, it's an indictment to your talent. So uh, there is a lot of negativity though on social media that people attach to both these dolls and the people who make them. So yes. what do you do? To lose focus from what you do. I mean, I'm sure that's very difficult, and there's that's a lot to deal with. So yes. what do you do to? focus it's um well you know first of all i want to say that the feeling that people feel is called um uncanny valley it is the feeling that you feel when you go to a wax museum and you see they look so realistic but you know they're not real and you are being tricked and you you're like creeped out but in in a way you're admiring so that's uh that's the uncanny valley and people don't like that feeling um well i have had comments like that's creepy you're weird that's a work of the devil it's gross that's uh just you know and and uh comments also like uh i want to run over it i want to smash it into the wall just violent violent comments and i can't really i want to ask them who hurt you what, what where is this you know where is this coming from the violence it's a doll you know <laughs> you know this just uh, before i was uh, hurt. I was taking it personally because it's a lot of work making them. But then, you know, I realized, well, 
attention, whether bad, good or bad, is attention. So thank you for the attention you're giving me because people get, you know, you, you get more attention because people give you attention. So I get, I think that's how this doll actually went viral on TikTok. But the comments are not all good, but, you know, <laughs> it made me viral. So uh, what I wish is for people to understand the art behind making them. Because yeah. it's because people don't know how they are made. They just look at the end product and they say, ooh, that's creepy. But if you understand, like what I told you about coming from a block of clay to casting mm -hmm. them and making into unpainted silicone and doing that hand painting, that every detail by hand, then it will, it uh, somehow, I hope it would give them the, you know, to veer their emotion to, wow, that's an amazing art, instead of, ew, that's gross, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So thank you for this interview. I hope it gives uh, people that knowledge. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, one thing that people can get from this interview for sure is perspective on like the journey that the artist goes through. And I mean, just being a quote warrior doesn't really help. I mean, it's, it's really stupid to be honest. Yeah, and this, these helping a lot of people to be yes. honest i think based on this i i have a feeling that you probably just don't let your dolls reach anyone like you said you don't sell to minors and you have a process probably in place on how you sell and who you sell to right because you don't have an ebay listing as such there's something that you've mentioned before yes uh i don't yeah. do ebay because um and i don't also uh, sell on my website because the internet is like the wild wild west it's you can't control who you're selling to you they pay you but then you send the doll and they say i didn't receive it and they file a claim on paypal so you lose your money you lose your doll that you worked with for many many months so i i have re a return customer i have a little client base but i love it that way because i know them i you know i've been friends with them so they keep coming back these are really collectors they have a wide collection and i not that i pick but i interview my customer if i have a a new customer i ask for mm -hmm. a reference character reference because you know we we also i also need to give others a chance to get a doll from me but i need character reference i need someone to vouch for their character that they're legit and that they're not scam gonna scam me yeah so that kind of and also my dolls sell before i start painting them because what i do oh. is yeah i do live box opening on facebook uh, so when people watch my live and they see, oh, she has a new unpainted kit. So they message me and they say, can I secure this doll? Can I have it? I said, sure. And it's the, I don't bug them for payment because I take, a, I take a while to paint. So I give a year layaway and my, oh. yeah. And my, um, terms and conditions pay what you can, when you can. But uh -huh. please keep in contact, in constant communication with me, and whatever they put in, if they send me money, that's non-refundable. I think it's a fair transaction because they can extend their layaway, but whatever they pay me, they cannot take it back. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, what, according to you, since you've been doing this for so many years now, is the most challenging part of probably painting a silicon wave? The eyebrows. Eyebrows. The eyebrows. Oh. I'm still, I don't paint the eyebrows, some artists paint the eyebrows, but I want the eyebrows to be three-dimensional, like hair, you know. So what I do with the eyebrows, I hand apply, I use hair, mohair, but I put the strand one at a time and, mm -hmm. and seal and uh, yeah, I, I want them to look real. Okay. <laughs> but it's challenging. <laughs> yeah, and what is the easiest part then? What what? comes very naturally to you my favorite part to do are the nails and the lips and the little uh details like this he has a scratch mark he has some milk spots and oh. um oh <laughs> <laughs> and the the nails <laughs> i just cannot yeah. <laughs> okay. i also make the little umbilical stump you know the healing umbilical oh, yeah, stump yeah. <laughs> so i mean can you tell me probably of any instance where you've got appreciation for a doll that you've made i i read somewhere that you gifted your mom a doll that looked like a baby you and yes. i can imagine that 
must be very heartwarming for a Christmas gift, right? So can you okay. tell me about more that come from these people who have adopted these dolls? I say adopted yeah. because that's something. I thank you. Have. Yes, yes. Thank you for using that word. Yes. Uh, my mother uh, grew up in, during the World War Two, so uh, <laughs> and they were poor, so she didn't have a doll. They didn't have a doll. There's two girls. She has a sister. And her sister told me that when they were little, my mother would make a doll out of a cloth rag and corn silk for the hair. And that was their doll that they play with. So in 2011, when I just started making these dolls, I found a sculpt that looked like me. I found a face that looked like me. It's vinyl uh, when I was little. And I named it Ellie Rose from my father's name Elias and my mother's name Rose. And I gifted oh. it to my mom and she was then 84 years old, never ever had a doll in her life. So she was, I don't know if you saw the YouTube video of her receiving yes, it. Okay. And the, the, her face is like, she looked like a little child getting a doll for the first time and she was in tears and she loved that doll so much. Most of my clients, my the mummies, they uh, send me a message, sometimes voice message after they receive the doll. Sometimes they do, they film the unboxing and you can see their, them in tears receiving the doll. And it's always a great feeling like it just validates me as an artist. Like yeah, I chose the right path, the right career or whatever you call this vocation. <laughs> and one that would stick to me really forever is this lady, is this um, adult lady with autism. I don't okay. know if you heard that story. Her mom messaged me on Instagram and the mom said she has a, a an adult daughter who has autism, who's obsessing with having her own daughter. But due to her medical condition, of course, she, she can't. So she reached out to me and I made, she adopted a doll from me. and. <laughs> she filmed the box opening and you can really see the the the, the girl was in awe she, she's an adult and a prime of her you know 26 it's the it's the baby bearing age right so you have that in you the feeling of that motherly i want to have a baby and she had a baby and we still keep in contact I'm still in contact with uh, her mother and she said mm -hmm. she still loved that baby so much that it's she treats it like her real child and her care caregivers in that institution also help her in looking after the baby isn't that lovely that they yeah. accept it that's so nice <laughs> yeah story i'm sure that yeah you're right you probably felt really validated as an artist mm -hmm. when stories like yes so i have to ask you i mean i'm sure that you know your shipping partners might be really stumped when you're just putting a baby in a box and sending it away so can you tell me about how the shipping works <laughs> how the shipping works each doll that i send home they go home with a layette uh clothes different clothes and most of them i make myself because i like it very personal and i don't just throw in clothes i ask the mummy what colors do you like on your baby what theme would you like they say oh i like elephants so i like unicorns or i like roses so i make clothes with that kind of theme and i also make them a, a carrier a bag because i'm a collector myself too and i like uh showing off my doll but you can't carry them in public like that so i make a bag that folds down into a bassinet and that's the ride of the doll yeah so it's um it's a beautiful ex and i have a birth certificate and there's even mm -hmm. a dolly passport that i send <laughs> yeah and the care instructions uh and so the adoption is like really like an adoption so when they receive the baby it's the baby's ready sometimes you i i, I put pacifier and uh, a baby bottle and it's just like a an, an adoption and my most of my uh, customers say it's like Christmas when they get it all from me because I go overboard with my <laughs> with my gifts, you know, the for the baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot, there's a lot of other stuff that comes yes, with it. Yes, I love I love the shipping part. I love the that part when I pack the doll. But it's heartbreaking, you know, it's uh it's heart wrenching and sometimes some dolls come back to me because I do tell my customers if you ever 
ever rehome, need to rehome your doll, please let me know. Please give me the first dibs and I'll buy it back. I have a couple of dolls that came back to me. You buy your own dolls back? Yeah. Is that? Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, like I said, I want my dolls to go to people I know. So these, sometimes they just, and they know each other too. So what happens is that sometimes they buy each other's dolls which were made okay. by me as well and sometimes before they sell the doll to someone else or to post in public they tell me first and i get the first dibs to to buy back the doll because i i want to just have it packed and to be out there with someone i don't know <laughs> uh one thing i want to know is uh do you all do you have uh, dolls of only uh do you have dolls of different ethnicities i'm asking because i'm an indian Mm -hmm. The first one, the first one that I made, it was Asian inspired, so it has more porcelain skin tone, and okay. uh, I also have made a, a few biracial babies, darker babies, but okay. more like olive skin, more like my skin tone. I haven't made a real darker um, skin tone because mm -hmm. it's not my comfort zone because it. It's uh, it take it has more. It involves more colors, and if you don't mm -hmm. do it right, the doll can look muddy, because mm -hmm. you look you use darker colors, right? So I want to perfect that first before I okay. sell really dark babies, and it's something that I am uh, teaching myself working on. But biracial babies, like olive skin tone, yeah, I can do that, and I have done them too, yeah. But the most uh sellable items are the just the newborn 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 skin tone yeah so i mean since you're talking about newborn you also do a lot of preemie babies if i'm not mistaken yes up to be is that something that you planned on from the beginning or how did you come to mm -hmm. making preemie i am a, a prototype artist meaning the sculptors i work with sculptors they sculpt the baby and they give me a blank kit to paint to use to advertise their work and sometimes i get micro freebies like the really oh. you know like 24 gestation and as a as a prototype artist i my job is to bring that to life mimicking the the actual baby in that gestation so uh i painted a micro preemie by just looking at photos online of micro preemie babies and mimicking their um it's a hard it's it's very emotional to paint the little mm -hmm. ones because mm -hmm. i you look at real ones to compare the skin tone and if you keep you constantly looking at a very fragile baby is 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 very emotional <laughs> yeah and then when i also post them photos i use real um those gadgets the nikyu gadgets that so they look so real and you just can't help but oh you know sad but there's a market out there and some of them are actually used as um uh, a model to model their by medical supply stores you know, okay. they 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 display these babies to uh -huh. sell their cannula and their tubes that they're selling. The medical supplies, they not clinics, but medical suppliers, and they use them. And sometimes they use also these dolls, the micro preemies, as uh, demo babies when they teach nurses or medical That's practitioners instead of hurting uh, a real baby, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah. and I also do the drink and wet system in in my some of my dolls, the soft ones. I make a, I make a tube inside. I put a, a silicone tube inside, and okay. actually can feed the baby water and it pees. So those that system you can use to teach the uh, what do you call it? G, GI tube? Is it a GI tube? Yeah, you can because you can actually insert the tube, and you can oh. do the, the yeah. So it's. Uh, I neck how they would expect you to right yeah because this is mm -hmm. quite plan, to be honest yes. like oh yes. yeah yeah uh so i would imagine that there is a, or, yes. you know the educational segment for these dolls so is that something that you cater to? that's something that you specifically make models for yes i just uh got an order actually from a, a medical supplier uh this lady ordered one um a darker baby 
I need to really learn how to make that. And uh, an and olive skin baby, they're going to use as a, as a model. And there's another lady from Korea who's given me the challenge of making a doll where it, with a hollow inside. This is my, my project, I'm telling you. Uh, so they can put something like a, like a mechanism inside. So when they do the CPR, it gives feedback. <laughs> So they're oh, gonna wow. use the yeah. Isn't that isn't that amazing? So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's not just the creepy collector's item. They are educational tools. So she wants she wanted me to come up with a doll with a hollow inside exactly. hollow, and they could put a, a mechanism. Because this is such such an important thing. I mean, educating the future of medicine. Yes. <laughs> In your field, is there an instance of you know having knockoffs or you know people just straight off plagiarizing your work? Oh yes, not just my work, but other work by by well-known sculptors around the world. And this is now a rampant uh, happening in the doll world, in the doll industry. Th those knockoffs are hurting the artists because it's not their work, but they make money out of them. And um, I. I hope that people would also educate themselves when they when they buy a doll to buy from the artist and legit legit uh, sellers, not knock knockoffs, because it's illegal. But it's it's hard to control. We we can't control them. So awareness is uh, I think would help really a lot our sculptors to uh, just um, buy authentic, but just buy authentic. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think that was a wonderful interview. It was so nice talking to you and seeing little baby over there. <laughs> so More babies to come this year. <laughs> so, how many projects are you working on this year? How many? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, I have a lineup of dolls and uh, they are very cute. So, yeah, um, I will share on my Instagram and you'll see that they're very cute babies <laughs> coming this year. My Instagram is my uh, business name, Dizon Designs and Doll Works. And my name is Susan Gibbs, the artist, oh. the only artist <laughs> of Dizon Designs and Doll Works. So, you're like a one woman run business, right? Yeah, yes, I am. But still, I'm a sole proprietor. I'm not a company because I want it to okay. stay as a hobby, not as a business. It was so lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending time with us on the show. Take you care. Too. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.